Animations look great, but without interactions, they're just, well, animations. To make them truly useful, we need a way to control how they respond to clicks, hovers, and other actions. That's exactly what state machines are for. In this series, we'll build an interactive radial menu while learning the core ideas behind state machines. In this video, we'll break the animation into modular segments and then turn those segments into states. Here's what we're working with. A radial menu that opens on click and icons that highlight on hover. To make it interactive, we can't leave it as one long animation. We need to break it into smaller, reusable chunks called segments. These give us control over each part of the animation. For this menu, we'll need several segments. One will handle the menu opening, another will cover it collapsing, and an idle segment will capture the frames where nothing happens and the menu is inactive. We'll also need segments for each icon lighting up on hover so they can respond individually. To create them, click the Segments button. Let's start with the menu opening. Scrub through the timeline to find the exact start and end frames. You can either click on Add New Segment and manually enter the frame numbers, or use the work area handles to mark the section, and then click on Add New Segment. This will automatically enter the start and end frame numbers. Once that's done, give it a name. I'll call this one Menu Open. Perfect! Since we're already here, let's quickly mark the idle segment too. From frames 0 to 13, nothing happens in our animation, so we can mark this chunk as idle by following the same steps. Next, let's mark the hover segments. We'll start with the first icon, the palette tool. Find the start and end points where the icon increases in size and lights up. Be careful not to include the part where the icon shrinks and turns gray again, otherwise the hover will reverse, which we don't want. We want the icon to remain blue as long as the mouse is hovering over it. Once we've got the right frames, create a new segment. I'll call this Palette Hover. Perfect! Repeat the same process for the remaining icons. Finally, let's mark the frames where the menu closes. And that gives us all the segments we need. Now comes the fun part. Once our segments are finalized, open the State Machines tab from the top menu. This changes the Lottie Creator workspace. This is where we'll build our State Machines. But don't worry, if you want to make changes to your animation, you can always go back to the Animate tab, make adjustments, and then return here. On the left, you'll see the list of segments we just created. To create a state, simply drag a segment over to the grid. The moment we drop the idle segment, it becomes a state you'll see the state block appear on the canvas. Clicking on a state reveals all its properties. For example, you can choose autoplay to decide if the state should start playing automatically. Loop lets you repeat the state, and playback mode allows you to play it forward, in reverse, or even bounce back and forth. You can also adjust the speed directly here without returning to the animation. There are also action options, which define what happens when you enter a segment right before you leave it, or after it fully completes. We'll explore these in more detail when we cover transitions in a later video. For now, you can preview any segment using the play button. If you play our idle state, nothing happens since there's no movement in that segment. But drag in another segment and hit play, you'll see only that specific chunk play. This is really useful for making sure a segment is captured correctly. At the bottom, you'll see initial state. By default, the first segment we dragged in, idle, is set as the initial state. This means the animation will always begin here. To change it, grab the initial state label and apply it to another state, or right-click and select set as initial state. We also have final state, which marks where the state machine ends, and global state, which is always active in the background. Global states let us jump between different states instantly. Think of it like planning a party with friends. You could send multiple DMs and let the chain of messages go on, or just post once in a group chat where everyone sees it instantly. That's how global states work. They let everything talk to each other right away. In our radial menu, if we don't use a global state, every icon would have to be connected to every other icon. And the web of connections would quickly get messy and hard to manage. With a global state, we only need one connection. It stays active in the background, listens all the time, and lets users jump smoothly between tools in any order without the crisscross. To set it up, drag the global state to our canvas and set it as our initial state. 
Then bring in the menu open, menu close, and all the hover segments as states. At this point, we have all the states we require to start constructing our state machine. And that's it for the foundation. So far, we've created segments by slicing our animation into meaningful parts, turned those segments into states, explored the key controls available in each state, and set our initial state, with the option of using global states for cleaner logic. That wraps up part 1. Now that our segments and states are ready, in part 2, we'll add the inputs and transitions that will drive our state machine forward. So stay tuned! And if you'd like to explore more or dive deeper into state machines, check out the links in the description below.